thank you for coming and helping us celebrate our 76 anniversary, 72nd anniversary. Can't believe it's a year and we're back here. Sorry, Easter weekend. We appreciate everyone celebrating with us. So I know our crowd is a little bit down, but you know we're all here to celebrate this anniversary. I'm Kim Green, president of the Brandy Station Auxiliary. We hope you enjoy our evening. If everyone could be so kind as to put their cell phones on vibrate, we'd greatly appreciate just a small reminder. Jeannie Jones and Brian Maxson will conduct the missing member. A remembrance to departed and not present comrades of the fire department and auxiliary. In the United States Armed Forces, there is a tradition at military banquets where a separate table is set with a place setting and the cover of, or hat of a military service member. The cover or hat and place setting remind those in attendance of departed comrades and friends who served their country with honor but have passed on to a better place. Tonight, the Brandy Station Volunteer Fire Department and Auxiliary continues that tradition. At the left side of the head table is a table with a place setting, a Brandy Station Fire Department firefighter's helmet, and an auxiliary apron. The place setting helmet and apron represent not only our comrades and friends who have fallen, but also those who could not be with us tonight because of ill health. To our blessings, we did not lose anyone this past year of 2022. Also, remember those that have passed away years ago and are near and dear to our hearts as we light a candle for them. The red rose represents our loved ones that have passed, and the white rose represents the angel that came to take our loved ones to heaven. If everyone would please bow your heads. Father, praise you for friendship and family. Thank you for bringing us together today to share a meal. The people in our lives bring us such joy, and we are grateful for time spent in fellowship together. Help us to use this time to bond closer as a group and learn to love each other more. Bless our appetites, both physical and spiritual, to honor you in all we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Good evening. For those who don't know me, my name is Pep Trollo. I'm the chief here at Brandy Station. Some of the notable accomplishments for, the 20, for 2022, we participated in monthly multi-company drills. We received a grant from to, for replacement of our first responder vehicle from the Jesse and Rose Loeb Foundation for $66,000. Our community outreach programs we participated in this year, uh, some of the more notable ones were our fire prevention lectures uh, with local church organizations and public schools, staffing for the annual air fest at the Culpeper Airport, we completed uh, fire safety demonstrations and classes for local businesses. Held community, the held we held the community Christmas tree lighting, the animated light show, our animal car, carnival and parade, um, our car show, and lastly our junior rookie camp. Um, our department answered 558 emergency calls, 945 non-emergency calls for a total of 1,503 events for the year. The department logged 1,635 man hours on emergency incidents. 11,333 hours on non-emergency incidents. We maintained a five minute and five second, five minute, five second response time uh, from home, home emergency response. Additionally, the department logged 926.4 hours of training for an accumulative total of 13,028 hours for 2022. Today, it's estimated that $1.2 million is the cost to staff one engine. Currently, we operate two engines, a heavy rescue, a tanker, a brush truck, and a first responder unit. To staff these units alone would roughly cost the county about $4.8 million. $4.8 million, and that's just personnel. That does not include the station or the apparatus. The 57 active members here at Brandy that I introduced to you offer this service for free. I know it can be frustrating at times when we miss scheduled events or don't make it back in home time for dinner. I've heard the question posed to many of our members, why does it take you five minutes to get to the station but four hours to get home? <laughs> I wish I could explain this. It's just the firehouse life, but if it's something that you must experience before you can understand it. If you are a wife, a husband, mother, father, significant other, or child, of a Brandy Station member, please stand. <laughs> Let's 
See, I got all the shy ones up now. <laughs> These ladies and gentlemen make this possible. Thank you. It's my honor this, year, this evening to present the awards. Uh, there's an insert in your program with a brief synopsis of the awards I will be presenting. We're going to start with the years of service. If I could have uh, Phoebe Martin and Brian Maxson come forward. All right, with five years of service, uh, Nate Dawson. I don't believe Nate is with us this evening. Um, also with five years is Ernie Firkin. He also is not with us. Uh, Zach Fowler with 10 years, and also not with us this evening. Eric Mackison with 15 years, and he's also not here with us this evening. <laughs> it's a busy weekend. And I know he's here. Uh, Rick Lane with 40 years. Rick, stay up here for just a second. Uh, Robert Mackison, could I have you come forward, please? <clears throat> These two gentlemen, Rick Lehman and Robert Mackison, have reached a milestone in our department. They have only been, this has only been attained by two other members, the late David Sambo Brown and Tony Trollo. With 40 years of continued service as an active operational member, you are being recognized this evening as our engineers. Thank you both for your dedication to the department. So next on the agenda, I think, is a top call runner. Make sure I'm going to make sure I'm going to check now. Yeah, all right, top call runner. The uh, top 10 active members of the Brandy Station Volunteer Fire Department logged the most hours during 2022. If you please hold your applause until all the members have been introduced. At number 10, Wayne Gibson Jr. with 126 calls. Uh, number nine is Gordon Mackison with 137 calls. He had to go to work tonight. Uh, number eight is David Myers with 139. <coughs> Number seven, Cameron Scott with 164. Appreciate that. Thank you, Ben. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Got it. Number six with Charlie Bullard at 170 calls. Number five is Patrick Glasscock with 173. Myself at number four with 183. At number three is Daryl Myers with 192. At number two is Matt Glasscock with 255. The top call runner for 2022 has been a member of the Brandy Station Volunteer Fire Department since November of 2015. He's had multiple positions both at the county level and within the department throughout his time. Along with being the top call runner, he also participated in numerous events throughout the year, including event standbys, public education, community outreach programs, county events, fundraisers, and duty crews. He served as our chief in 2021 and 2022 with 298 calls for 2022. Please, jo please join me in congratulating Stacy Carpenter as our 2022 top call runner. The next is our training award. The individual that logged more training hours for the, for the year more than any other BVFD member successfully completed both Firefighter 1 and 2, Hazmat Ops, and EMTB. This member also actively participates in running emergency calls, fundraisers, county events. We would like, please join me in congratulating Matt Glasscock for this year's training award. The next award is our EMS Provider Award. This award is given to a member that throughout the year has shown passion for EMS while also providing extraordinary patient care on calls. This individual 
has been a member of BVFD since 2015, repeatedly one of our top call runners. He continues to be a devoted member to this department and is consistently looking for ways to further his own knowledge, skills, and abilities while also volunteering his time to assist with training of our other members. Although EMS, EMS is not always the coolest thing to talk about around the firehouse, it is inevitably a very important part of what we do, as well as a large volume of the calls that we run. We, can provide, we cannot provide these services without members like him. Please join me in congratulating Mikey Carpenter as this year's EMS Provider of the Year. Our next award is the Irons Award. This member joined the department in 1984. He has served in many roles throughout his tenure here at Brandy. This award recognizes someone that carries the same attributes as a set of irons, the most depended upon tools of the fire service. This member fulfills one of the most daunting tasks, serving as our EMS quality control officer. He ensures accuracy on patient care reports and ensures the department remains compliant with the Virginia Department of Health regulations. Please join me in congratulating Chuck Clatterbuck as this year's Irons Award recipient. Chuck is also not with us this evening. Our next award is the Richard Bunny Jones Firefighter of the Year. This member joined our department in 2018, and from the moment he walked through the door, he showed qualifications that we here at Brandy have come to expect from our membership. He is always the first to lend a helping hand when needed, no matter how major or minor the task may be. He is an excellent firefighter, EMS provider, and hard worker. He actively takes on responsibilities within the firehouse, is always looking for ways to improve our department. He recently has was ranked top recruit in Fauquier County's recruit school, which although we are although we are very proud, we would expect nothing less. Please join us in recognizing and congratulating Patrick Glasscock as this year's recipient of the Richard Bunny Jones Firefighter. Yeah. And the last reward that I'll be presenting as our most prestigious award is the R.J. Price Award. This award is always one of the hardest to decide the recipient of every year as we have so many great members at BVFD that consistently exemplify what, what this award means. However, this past year there was one individual that stood out among the rest to deserve this honor. This member joined our department in 2010. He hit the ground running and has been actively involved in all aspects within the department since. He has a love for camaraderie and a passion for bringing people together. He has an infatuation for everything fire department. He is one of he, he is one who will step up and rise to the occasion. One of the co-founders of our junior rookie camp participates regularly in pub eds, continually tries to recruit new members, chairs our annual car show, served on the apparatus spec committee, and most notably, chief through one of the most challenging years in 2020. He currently serves as our assistant chief. Please join me in congratulating Cameron Scott as this year's R.J. Bryce Award recipient. And I'll now turn this over to, as I call him, Dad, but Tony Troy. I was ready to speak, but I'm going to introduce the president of the auxiliary, Kim Green. She's going to do this first, and then I'm coming. Oh. Okay. Yeah, go. Where's my, where's my notes? Huh? You want my notes? No. No, I do not. Okay, now I'm going to induce, uh, uh, introduce the Brandy Auxiliary. When I call your name, could you please stand? Life member Marianne Bowersock. Life member Arlene Brown. Vian Kaufman, who's not here. Life member Donna Shabbat, who was unable to be here. A life member Kathy Crossgrove. Tracy Gibson. Wayne Gibson Sr. Rachel Green. Hope Hot. Charter member Doodle Jenkins, life member Jeannie Jones, Kelly, you don't have to stand, Kelly Kern, life member, <laughs> Melody Mackison, Elizabeth Miller, life member Doris Myers, 
This is your Brandy Auxiliary. And now I'd like to introduce our support members who without their help we wouldn't be able to do half the stuff we do. Pete and Linda Jury. <laughs> Sally Mackison. Barbara Leathers. Jamie Gibson. And Raven Trollo. <laughs> I'd like to recognize a few people for their years of service. Fionn Kaufman, who is not here, with five years. Rachel Green, 10 years. <laughs> Kelly Kern, 35 years. <laughs> and Arlene Brown, 55 years. <laughs> Last but not least, I'd, like, I'd be remiss if I didn't recognize a few people who have supported us throughout the year. Cameron Scott for cooking our barbecue at the last second, and Jessica for letting him come and cook our barbecue. <laughs> um, and most importantly, David, for helping keep us together and being our liaison by no fault of his own, which is not an easy task, to the auxiliary. We appreciate everything you do and our family members and our young family members who come and help us serving drinks, helping with the car show, and whatever it is that the parents tell them that they have to do. <laughs> So I'd like to um, also mention that we are bringing back our chicken dinner May 13th for the yeah. first time, and it's not drive through So now I'm going to introduce Tony. Thank you so much for coming. Good evening, and welcome to Brandy Station. <laughs> Maybe it's Brandy as far as I'm concerned, but... Thank you for being here, and happy Easter to all of you. Hello. It's a uh, very special time of the season, a very holy time, that you can take the time to be with us here this evening on Easter. Uh, thank goodness where we are, and we give a blessing. And it was funny. I can tell a story. I got a lot of stories I can tell. <laughs> I haven't even told it, and you're starting laughing already, so that's not fun. But my granddaughter, Kobe, came home and said, Mommy, Mommy, I learned something today. And she said, what's that, honey? And she said, we all come from dust. And when we go, we all go back to dust. And Raven said, that's great, honey. That's so wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Well, that was great. Well, about two hours later, Kobe says, Mommy, Mommy, come quick. She said, what's wrong? She says, come in my bedroom. Somebody must be coming or going underneath my bed. <laughs> Hi, honey. <laughs> All right, Matt Bryce, where are you? I got to tell the story. And he actually did this to me tonight. Doodle. Doodle. Where did you go to school? Huh? Where did you go to school? Thank you. <laughs> Joe Bailey, where are you? Where did you go to school? Brandy. Brandy. This conversation came up with me, and, I, and, I, and of course, I, oh yeah, we, we got two hours. I got, <laughs> I got a lot of time. But it's interesting, somebody said to me not too long ago, said, where, where are you from? And I said, I'm Brandy. And he looked at me and he said, uh, Brandy Station? I said, well, yeah, yeah, so you talk to my kids as Brandy, but I, I grew up in Brandy. And it's funny, I, I've got this, and Matt, I'm going to finish the story because you hit right on it when you walked through the door. Um, but originally, this was Brandy. Of course, it was a station, a railroad station, but I'm getting a little bit of information. I got a lot to talk about tonight because I got two hours yet to go. But anyhow, we all went to Brandy, and this fire department, when it was chartered in 1951, uh, was Brandy Volunteer Fire Department. If you look at some of our trucks and pictures, and I'm not sure they're on this marquee over here, but it says Brandy. Brandy was Brandy, Virginia. In 1957-58, I'm giving you the education now, Matt. The Ruiton Club, along with Billy Hill and, and a lot of the founding fathers of this department, we had a problem because there was Brandy, Virginia, and this was no zip code back then. 
It was Brandy Virginia or Bandy, B-A-N-D-Y. Bandy Virginia, and if you check me, it's in Southwest Virginia. Of course, there were no box numbers, things like that, so people would say, we always got our mail confused. So that's when the postmaster, along with the Ruiton Club, petitioned and Brandy became Brandy Station. But we grew up, Doodle, Joe, we all grew up in Brandy, and that's where we went to school, Brandy. All right, that's taken a few minutes. <laughs> Y'all not laughing at me yet, are you? It's going to get better. We started tradition many years ago, and they didn't have Jefferson Cups when I was born, so they didn't give them out when I got here because they didn't even know what Jefferson Cup was. But we have, over the last many, many years, have presented Jefferson Cups to our families who have had a baby Why this past year from last banquet to this year. So we have four recipients this year. And if I get it, and I want to thank the committee first. Phoebe, Sir. great job. Nicole, where you at? Wave your hand. And Caitlin, great job, y'all. Y'all should be up here talking instead of me. And these people would probably say you wish you had her. <laughs> but our first, uh, not first, I mean, we don't know how these ba babies came. And, and if some of you have had babies and you haven't told us about it, uh, you need to let me know because I, I've got four right now. But uh, Luke, it's Nate and Jessica Dawson's. They're not here, okay? Well, we're going to have Sam along. Is Cody here? Ricky, well, you can receive it for your, your grandson. Lucas, Cody, Brianna Lane. This is a little awkward. <laughs> How am I going to explain this? Yeah. That's your problem. Well, the next one, well, he, he received a distinguished award tonight, but he, he is a great, he has done a great job. You know I mean? This guy received the R.J. Bryce Award tonight. He can drive a side-by-side -side on his side, on his top. He can do anything, but he's fantastic the way he drives a four-wheeler. But anyhow, they had a child. Reagan, Cameron and Jessica Scott, Reagan. And I've got another special one, my granddaughter Lainey, Caitlin and Duck Waddell. She cannot be here tonight, but I will receive it for Lainey, daughter of Caitlin and Duck Waddell. Let's get serious for a minute. Well, I, I, I always am serious, but the Joe and Bootsy Memorial Service Award. And if you read it, it and, and all of you should have it, but if you don't, I'll tell you a little bit about it. My mother and father it was the heart and soul of this community. Uh, my dad, when he came here in 1939, couldn't believe that we didn't have a fire department. They were still talking about the death of Bill Kyle. Uh, Bill Kyle's death, I'm sorry who died in a house fire not too far from here. My father hadn't been here long when the church, at the Episcopal Church, burned. Right around the corner here. And they, they came from the CC camp. And then, of course, World War II came along and things changed and everybody had to do the job for this country. So off it went. So 1950, uh, my dad and D. Bailey, my grandmother and my uncle Frank were on the way to Florida and they went were going through Culpeper. You had to go through Culpeper to get out of Brandy. And Woody Carter had the old station, had the uh, station right there and they had the uh, 1928 Brockway uh, that Culpeper had, $800. Whew. A lot of money back then too. Then. And my dad said to Woody, he says, I'm going to buy this truck we're going to have a fire department in Brandy. Well, they went to Florida, watched the Tangerine Bowl, my uncle played, and they came back. And the forefathers and the people of this community banded together. My dad had a foresight to bring this community, and it brought this community together. And if you look, and you look at the members and the names and the people who are recipients tonight, it's all family, and we still continue to be family in this community. My mother, she started the old jury. Uh, she, she, along with Lee and Collins, sis, 
they went to Richmond. They had the first carnival that we started here, Mr. and Ms. Sattermeyer. So their heart and soul was in this community. Uh, I think about the Episcopal Church. I want to say a story real quick. I got a lot of stories. I can stamp you on. I, oh, yeah. But lightning, we were, I, I wasn't here that particular day, but lightning struck the Baptist Church, hit the steeple over here. We had, and I'm not sure who's in this building tonight, or some of the firemen who were in the building. Raise your hand, we'll stand up. There they are back. They're on call tonight. They were in this building when lightning struck the steeple of that church. If you look, that church is still standing because the fire department in this community was here. So the foresight of my mother and father brought this to this community, but it was through the help and support. And actually, my mother drove the first fire truck as a lady in 1953, I think. <laughs> well, Howard Newland was chief at the time, and he said, we got to have the water wagon in, in Richardsville. My mother drove it to Richardsville. That didn't go too well, I guess, but back then. But that was okay. She got it there. But anyhow, the fact of it is, this award has been created to recognize individuals or businesses in this community every year. And this created 10, 12 years ago. Uh, these people go over and beyond, and we've given many recipients. Uh, this year's recipient started that business in 1979. Uh, and actually, i got to say this because it's Easter. If you look at some of their trucks, they're all painted Easter egg colors because <laughs> none of them are the same color. It's beautiful colors. I like them. But they're clean. J.D. Newman started this business. I'm giving it out who it is as J.D. Newman real quick. He started the business in 1979. Great entrepreneur, great individual. I can't say a lot about the sons, but that's okay. <laughs> but the fact of it is, he brought something to the table. I didn't realize how emphatic this business was until I served on the tow board Richmond, and the president of the Virginia Trucking Association said, oh, you know Dave Newman. I said, yeah, don't hold that against me. <laughs> he said, what a great guy. And I said, yes, he is. But the fact of it is, Dave Newman and his brother and his family have been an asset. They found out how good Culpeper County was, and they left Falk here and moved to the industrial park here. And they have been an asset to this community. Now, we have a million dollar truck. Chief, right? Sitting in this building. And David Myers and I were on a call. And I think the first call that the truck went down, the truck literally shut. And Colbert was telling us to grab a plug. That's a hybrid case. Some of you don't know that. Well, we were going around the circle and the truck shut off. For three years, I think we dealt with this. If it hadn't been with the help and support, who is it? Okay. If it hadn't been a help and support of the Newman family, they helped us through that, along with the supervisors and the county government. But Dave and Burke were there. But that's not the only thing they've done. They've been here for our carnival. They've been here for our uh, car show. They, all you got to do is pick up the phone and call Dave. And he said, oh, Tony, I'm sorry, I don't understand what you're saying. But the fact of it is, he always supports us. The Newman family exemplifies what my mother and father brought to this community. Dave, please come forward as a recipient of the Joe and Bootsy Memorial Service Award this year. Thank you all very much. Make one adjustment before I get started. <clears throat> Somebody's a little shorter than I am. <laughs> First of all, thank you all. We are proud to be a part of the community and in and, and, uh, and total memory of my father and my brother. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. So thank them for what they've done to make us a part of the community. We can win all the awards you want. You can do everything you want. But we never will be what you folks are out here that dedicate your lives and your time to do what you do for the community. If you look at the, the events of the world in the last several weeks and the horrors and the stuff that have gone on, 
the first people that show up in this country to these events when they happen is the folks like you, regardless of the zip code. So be proud of who you are. Be proud of what you are. And thank you for all you do for the community. What we do is a drop in the bucket. A drop in the bucket. The five-minute response time and the four hours getting home, I get it. I don't even, I'm not even fire and rescue. I can be four hours getting home. <laughs> but sometimes you got to get lost to get found, and that's okay. But uh, thank you all. Thank you for what you do. You're a class act. It's wonderful in what you do for the community. Don't ever lose sight of it, and thank you so much. Appreciate it. Congratulations to the Newman family. You know, it's not on the program, I don't think. Nobody's sure what I'm getting ready to say. I'm not sure what I'm getting ready to say myself sometimes. What do you think, Cameron? I am a proud father of the chief of this department. His grandfather and myself were chief. And over the years, we've seen a lot. I mean, I can say my father and I, his number was 44. We had a sheet that had 50 numbers on it. And his was number 44, I was 27. We went to a call and we signed the sheet, and that was the end of it. We did a yearly report on a number of calls. Our, our time of filling out reports was probably an hour. Today, if we run a call, my son takes an hour just to do one call. So kudos to him. I am so proud of him. He is doing one fast, fantastic job. Okay? Excuse me, Matt. He exemplifies what a chief is, okay? He's on a call. And if any of you are firemen, and most of you are in this today, you know when you, you respond to a call, you see the chief. He's got a helmet with a chief. He's got <laughs> coats with a chief. <laughs> Who's telling this, you or me? And, and, and everybody recognizes who the chief is. Okay? You got it? He is doing one well of a job. I cannot say enough about my son as chief of this fire department. He acts like a chief. He is a chief. But with that being said, uh, Pat, chief, please come up here and stand right here. Right here. Pappy. Pappy. Please. Stand right here. Okay? So, he acts like a chief. He is a chief. And, of course, when his grandfather and I were chief, we only had, I think, 35 members. Today, oh, God, I don't know how many we got. 70? Okay, we got 70. So, I walk in the building every day, and I'll introduce myself to some people, the same thing I introduced to myself last week. They don't even know who I am. I can't remember who they are. But the fact of it is, we got new members coming here all the time. So, the fact of it is, when they come in, they should know who the chief is, right? They're on a fire call. They know who the chief is. So, Pappy, I think it would behoove you to be recognized as a chief so that you can look like a chief. I knew this was going to happen. I should have hit it. Chief, he's gonna pay for that one. <laughs> you know, I think I'm finished. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, where have I got to go now? Wait a minute. I'm done. Wait a minute, I got a few more things I want to say here. <laughs> All right. 
You're a servant. I think that's it. I can't say any more because I could run. All right. Thank you all. Good night and happy Easter. And now I'm going to introduce Marianne Balsock, Balsock who is going to introduce the supporting members for 2022. Good evening, and before I begin, most of you know I'm Mary Ann Bowersock, that I've been with this auxiliary since over 20 years. What many of you don't know is that as you leave tonight over at the intersection of Alanthus and Church Road across from Jimmy's is a white Episcopal church, Christ Episcopal Church, of which I am the register, or in plain English, the secretary. If you ever get a chance to go into that church, you will see two beautiful stained glass windows. You'll see church pews. You'll find church records. In fact, I just found church records dating back not only before 1916, but the uh, current register that came from 1916. All of this was saved, although the building burned in what is today Christ Episcopal Church uh, was a church social hall. It was saved. All of these important things, part of our Brandy community, by so many of those people, those of you who are descendants of those people. And on behalf of Christ Episcopal Church, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for saving this, this treasure to our community. Okay. Now, to get serious. So I want to thank Kim Green for allowing me to present tonight's Auxiliary Awards. I'm sure you, as well as I, appreciate the unique bonds of family and friends that exist among us who are associated with the firefighting community and the incredible amount of dedication put forth for its betterment and growth. 25 years ago, on the eve of my retirement from the United States Navy, I read an article about heroes, a word that is too easily used today as it has been in years past. It is for me a very, very great honor to be among individuals tonight who truly deserve the description of hero. Firefighters, law enforcement officers, Military members and medical professionals are on the front lines, constantly serving their communities to save lives while putting their own in danger. The family and friends, especially the families of these individuals, are also heroes in their own right and deserve recognition. I know from personal experience, as so many of you here tonight do, what it means to have your loved ones answering a call in the middle of the night or missing a special occasion. Maybe it's a birthday party. Maybe it's a kid's ball game. We know what it feels like when they come back safely to you. Victorious from saving someone's home or business or when they come home needing a hug or just to be in the presence of their loved ones because that call did not end well. Tonight, I have the pleasure of announcing the names of this year's selection of the Auxiliary Supporting Member of the Year, Member of the Year, and Granny Curtis Member of the Year. When I first came back here in 1997, what was known then as the Culpeper Regional Hospital, had as part of its mission statement that it was, as an ec entity, Caring, compassionate, concerned, and competent. These are the four threads or traits found in our three awardees tonight. Like old oak trees, centuries years old, who remain standing in the most strongest of winds, they, like the previous auxiliary awardees, possess deep roots to both the auxiliary and the community. They believe in service to others. Without further ado, the Auxiliary Supporting Member of the Year. 
Being a volunteer involves much sacrifice of personal time. This year's awardee assists the auxiliary in their multiple fundraising events. It doesn't matter how many hours are e needed for numerous events. Sometimes these come up at short notice. But this person can always be depended upon to show up and joyfully offer another pair of hands to ease the workload on other volunteers. She is known for her kindness and welcoming, friendly personality. Please give a standing ovation to Auxiliary Supporting Member of the Year, Raven Trollo. Now for the Auxiliary Member of the Year. Well, you've got to wait until some... Okay. <laughs> if the Duracell Battery Company ever decides to replace their Energizer Bunny with a person, tonight's awardee would be their first choice. She displays boundless energy and a dedication that matches her joyful spirit and her great sense of humor. Balancing her work and family commitments, she still has the time to assist to coordinate with many events, especially when it involves meals. Please give a standing ovation to Auxiliary Member of the Year, Elizabeth Beth Miller. Granny, or Thelma Curtis, was a longtime member of the Auxiliary. Although she was gone before I arrived here, I have heard many wonderful stories about her actions on behalf of the Auxiliary over the years. Her hard work is why our Auxiliary today is so successful. In her honor, tonight's award is given to an Auxiliary member who, like Granny, gives much of self to the fire department its auxiliary, the community, family, and friends. From the day she became an auxiliary member, she has been an inspiration to others and an innovator. Many of us associated with not only the Brandy Station Volunteer Fire Department, but with the Culpeper community at large had benefited from her actions and her kindness on numerous occasions. Tonight's awardee, Bill's esprit de corps. She may never know how many lives she has positively influenced, but she's an outstanding example and a reminder of the importance of living a life for others. Please give a standing ovation to the auxiliary Granny Curtis Member of the Year, my good friend, Kim Green. In closing, the Auxiliary would like to thank the many people who have assisted it throughout the year with its events to include the children of firefighters, Auxiliary members, and the community at large. They're not only our fire department and Auxiliary's future, but the community and the nation. Thank you, and I hope you have a wonderful good night. Well, I certainly can't follow Mary Ann. <laughs> um, we would like to thank our caterer, first of all, Bob's Blue Ridge Barbecue, for our meal tonight. It was a wonderful meal. And it was nice not to be in the kitchen for eight to ten hours today. 
At this time, I'm going to ask Kim Green, Brian Mackison, and Pepe Trollio to please come up. This past year in 2022, auxiliary members put in over 2,474 hours of volunteer time. The top five volunteers and hours were as follows. Number five was Rachel Green with 235 hours, Beth Miller with 310 hours, Jeannie Jones with 372 hours, myself with 404, and Kim Green with 580. As you can see, we all put in a lot of volunteer hours doing what we love, which is supporting our fire department. As many of you know, our annual carnival is one of our largest fundraisers each year. In 2022, we had a great year and could not have done it without the support of everyone in the community. In addition to the carnival, we also catered many dinners and worked with the fire department on several other events. This year's carnival, mark your calendars, is scheduled August 2nd to 5th, I believe, Jeff, is that correct? 2nd through the 6th. Okay, the 6th. Okay, at this time, Kim has the check. We are pleased to present the fire department with this check for $45,000. At this time, I'm going to ask Pepe to come back up for our closing uh, remarks. I'm back. <laughs> and I'm not wearing a hat again. And you're going to pay for that. <laughs> thank you again to the auxiliary. That's tremendous. <clears throat> today is about saying thank you. We gather today to say thank you and celebrate the accomplishments of the Brandy Station Volunteer Fire Department and extend our sincere thank you to the local community businesses that have continued to show support of our volunteer fire department through the generous contributions throughout the years. To the local government officials for the continued consideration and support and funding needs of our volunteer and EMS departments to ensure that the community is protected by the best trained and equipped personnel. Also through the measures that you take to approve ordinances and regulations that ensure the safety and protection of all of our first responders. To the other local fire and EMS agencies, police departments, and public safety dispatchers that the department works with on a frequent basis for your continued support by ensuring that all emergency inc incidents are answered and mitigated safely. To the auxiliary of our department for un your unwavering support, the various fundraiser events that you work, for the meals that you prepare, for our personnel, all of these acts of kindness and support do not go unappreciated or unnoticed. To the spouses and family of each department member, the sacrifices that you that each member's family has to make every day to ensure that each department member can actively participate is incredible. There are many missed family gatherings, dinners, vacations, special anniversaries, birthdays, youth sporting events because these volunteers choose to answer emergency calls without the hesitation to help their community during their time of crisis. You show so much patience when these families' events are interrupted or missed. You demonstrate a tremendous amount of support and encouragement because you continue to remain with the family while your loved one runs out to help another, never knowing if the loved one will return because of the dangers that they face. To each individual member for tirelessly answering the ever-increasing number of emergency calls during times of day and night, attending work weekly duty crews, attending fundraiser events, monthly training drills, attending the numerous monthly business and community meetings, you choose to help your neighbor and risk your life, not, to, not because you have to, but because you want to make a positive difference. You do not ask for glory, fame, or fortune, or even a thank you. There is no financial gain. Your acts of kindness, compassion, and patience do not go unnoticed. So in closing, I remind everyone that we have a very dedicated, motivated, and professional volunteer fire department. Each of our members makes a tremendous positive difference for the community that we serve, and I personally thank you for your service. At this time, I'm going to ask that you join me in giving a large round of applause of appreciation to those that have continued to serve the Brandy Station Volunteer Fire Department in making our community, a community a wonderful and safe community to live in. Have a safe trip home. May God bless you all, and Happy Easter.